Hello, everyone. Welcome to Time on Track. This is the podcast where we navigate the high speed racing and constantly changing storylines of Formula One. My name's Amravir, and I'm joined here with Ricardo. Ricardo, how are you doing today? Doing good. Doing good. I actually couldn't wait to have this 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 one um, this podcast down because this a this was a pretty good race in my opinion. Yeah, great race. Uh, excited to talk about it. Also, great seeing you. By the way, over uh, last week, I was in New York and was able to stop by the Warner Mount headquarters. That was a lot of fun. Um, before we get in, shall we do our requisite wrist check? That was a lot to say out loud. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Let's 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 let's, let's do it. Let's knock this All one. All right. Out. You you want you want me to go first? You want to go first? You know what? I'll I'll, I'll go first. Okay. The the people have seen this already. <laughs> um, PRX on rubber strap. Uh, story behind this is this was a gift um, on the day. It was a birthday gift on the day that it came out, which was June fourteenth. I forgot what year, but my wife basically got it for me for my birthday. A nice gift. And I've 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 had it for that while. There were months where I wasn't wearing it cuz I had a heavy rotation. Um but the other day I finally got the rubber strap to it and I've been wearing a lot more. What about you? What you wearing? Looks great. Looks great on the rubber strap. I am wearing an acquisition that came kind of by surprise uh from my trip to New York. Uh I'm wearing a Raven Trekker uh, this is, I believe, the 40 millimeter uh, version of it. So the prior version, and I have it on a, a NATO strap. Pretty cool watch. Uh, if you hear squeaking in the background, that's my dog, Bill, trying to get me to throw a toy for him. Uh, yeah, uh, cool vintage aesthetic to it. Um, pretty big slab side on, on some of the case. So putting on a NATO kind of brings down the weight, but really enjoying it so far. So interesting thing, just because you bring up the squeaky, the squeaky sound. Yeah. I heard that one of the main reasons dogs like that squeaky sound is because it's the sound of death mm-hmm. for like in the past when animals, when they used to kill like animals. And now it's be like, <laughs> like, is that true? Uh, I've heard that too. And I think in the case of my dog, that's 100% true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a mini Australian shepherd with a really high prey drive and also a really high like shepherding instinct so yes he's trying to kill everything and hurt everything in in sight (laughs) okay which also brings up like the other day i actually saw a dog like in prowl mode Mm -hmm. it was the first time i've ever seen a dog in prowl mode like like the full it was so reminiscent of yeah Yeah. like it was so reminiscent of like a, a big game cat oh yeah and like the slow like methodical like you're not gonna see me, mm-hmm. you're not gonna see me, and then just like, and with this dog, they they were chasing squirrels, so it literally was just like, mm. yep. and like we're all sitting there, like, what is she doing? <laughs> and then it, when it hits, you're like, oh, 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 that's what she's yeah. doing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I I grew up with like German shepherds that would do that all the time. It's pretty ridiculous to see it in action. Oh my goodness. Um, and then, and then they just go back to the humans, like nothing mm-hmm. happened. Like, like, Ooh, pet me. <laughs> exactly. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a trained killer, but pet me. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but yeah, this is oh. time on track, a dog podcast where we talk about the predatory instincts of our favorite friends. So there we go. There note, we go. Uh, you want to talk about Azerbaijan. This amazing Baku Baku race, uh, the city by the sea on the Caspian Mm -hmm. Sea. Uh, Pretty crazy weekend. Uh, Interesting end result. Uh, And McLaren has some interesting things to think about, but uh, not sure what you want to talk about first. Do you want to talk about qualifying or start there? I say let's let's jump into qualifying. Mm -hmm. I will say that... I love this race, but there's one thing about this race that really stood out to me this time around. Like, and and like I, I'll mention it a little bit later. Oh, but like it was okay. so, it, yeah, so stood out to me this time around. Um, but yeah, no, definitely qualifying. I, I think we could jump right into sure. it. I mean, we had first Lando, 
not making it past yes um q3 like um, q q1 yeah lando q1. didn't make it out of the first round of qualifying which was dude pretty spectacular and i think we're where we were going into this race uh and speaking of the mclaren pp rules where they said before the race that they're going to give the priority to Lando Norris over Oscar Priastri because he's in the hunt. And then he, he, he not, he gets knocked out in Q1. So he's in the, it's like he heard, it's like he heard that and he just said, Oh, I, I guess I don't really have to push that. Yeah. Hard. Let me start in 16. Oh my gosh. But like the story coming from him is, you know, the yellow flag kind of messed him up on that last, on that last lap. I mean, mm-hmm. people are watching that footage like the Sabrina film, and like some people are just like, "No, that's not the case. What are you talking about? You you fudged it up before then." But I, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and just say I think that played a role in him fudging it up. But really, whatever the reasons for why he fudged it up, he fudged it up, and yeah. it went from Oscar. Like you, you know, help help your man's to like Oscar unleash the crash, yeah. <laughs> and and I think of all the drivers on the grid, I think Oscar Piastri might have been the happiest driver when that happened, just knowing that like it literally just unleashed him, and then like there was that that was there was no way Landon Norris was gonna make it all the way back up front unless there was like a major crash. Yeah. Uh, at which point, like it, that would just be crazy. But it, it. I mean, I could just imagine. Yeah. Like, we'll get into it. He did. He did Oscar a pretty good job just... of uh, kind of ripping through the field. But that's that's yeah. story for race time. So yeah, I think that's by yeah. far the number one uh, biggest biggest ticket item coming out of qualifying was that Lando Norris was out mm-hmm. in Q one, um, and I think another fun aspect of qualifying. Uh, and maybe someone we probably should have talked about on the last podcast uh, is the two Williams drivers made it through to Q3. Uh, and Franco Colapinto, uh, I like the Ricardo's the, throwing up throwing, the I'm West throwing, side. I'm throwing the, 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 the Williams signs yeah. up. <laughs> I love it. I almost wore my Williams shirt again just for this this podcast. Dude, he looks so good behind that wheel i don't know if it's because logan was so bad (laughs) (laughs) that he looks so but like he's immediately paying off for that yeah and and it makes me wonder like it one it shows just how much they were willing to try when it comes to logan Mm -hmm. because there must have been like an inkling that they had that in the back like someone there must have known, you know, Franco can Franco can ball mm-hmm. because the, the the they made the decision so quick and everybody was like, who is this kid? But they knew, yeah. Which just lets me know that the amount of rope they gave Logan was long, yeah, yeah, absolutely Very long. Uh, because if you knew you had someone like that waiting in the rings and you still had Logan Sargent ra- racing for that long, yeah, that that. No one could sit here and say Logan Sargent wasn't given an opportunity. He was given an opportunity. He was given an opportunity, probably way too long of an opportunity. But Franco, I, we didn't talk about him in Monza. Uh, you know, it's funny. It was, we were talking about um, uh, Kimi Antonelli and, and how they threw him to the fire and he, he crashed out in uh, FP1. But you know who also spun out but controlled Almost. the car? What, yep. what, was Cole Pinto. <laughs> so there's... Yep. You know, he who had then ended up actually, I think, crashing in uh, in practice in this race. So maybe it comes back yeah. around. But either way, great result for them. Uh, they qualified, I think, ninth and tenth. So both Albon in tenth and Colapinto actually out qualifying him in eighth was a pretty good result for Williams. And hmm. uh, they look they look pretty good. I got to say, yeah. No, they both both cars look good. It's interesting seeing like I'd love to see the dynamic now between Albon and Franco Mm -hmm. because now like you could seriously say I know it's early but like it does seem like the kid has something 
Like, it's going to be interesting to see how how Albin kind of responds to that. Yeah. Because I feel like ever since he left Red Bull, I feel like he's always been treated as the better driver on the team. I mean, compared to Logan like Sargent. Just, yeah, he has been for the last yeah, two years. Two years. So, like, to now have someone who can actually drive better and, like, and looks good like it's going to be interesting to see how he he deals with that that's going to be that's going to be yeah. fun that's going to be it's fun. also fun just that it seems like the williams car is is improving and they are a team that's clearly moving away from spreadsheets into actual data analysis and so you know maybe we're seeing this is foreshadowing into what we're going to see next season and potentially the years after that where they're actually putting real money into this car and Williams is returning to the the glory days. That's, this is my hope. I'm maybe next year, maybe the year after I might just be a full Williams fan, like full on. That was the team of my youth. And that might be the team of my future. Yeah. I'm, it's, it's an internal question I've been struggling with. Like next year, do I, am I a Lewis Hamilton fan? And by default, a Ferrari fan? Or am I just a Lewis Hamilton fan and, like, I actually maybe root for another You're team? You're definitely getting a Ferrari hat. <sighs> Red does look good on my skin, <laughs> I have to say. But, um, no, it, it, it's going to be interesting because I I feel like the way Lewis looks nowadays, I don't know if he'll, he'll, he'll be a full three years. He might just do two and be out, like... I I don't see him doing two years of the new regs. Like mm-hmm. I I don't know. I he 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 so looks like the grandfather, and I I say this in the utmost respect. I'm not talking about skills, but he so has the grandfather persona right now. Like I've never seen Lewis Hamilton loved this mm-hmm. much. Are you are like, you hinting at a like at the end of the race when he just came up came up to Ollie Behrman and who was uh, filling in for uh, Kevin Magnuson. Uh, and so he came up to Ollie Behrman and Colapinto and just like patted them both on the back. And they clearly were both starstruck by that. Yeah. 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 Like it, it, and that, that was one of the biggest things that they were talking about after the yeah. race. Like it, it, like he, he is so in grandfather like mode. Mm-hmm. Like he is, he's going to be, he's going to be someone's Nikki. I could already say to see that. Like he's going to be someone's that'd be cool. Like, like just really coaching them and helping them like in someone that they can trust and like they can go to. Cause there's just something, like I said, I've never seen him loved this much. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was, that was Lewis, but no, I mean, we had Williams had Norris and we had another interesting thing, which, which kind of happened later. um, Like after qualifying, we had, Gasly get disqualified? Yeah. Which was, yeah, which was interesting. So he had his like, qualifying you, times um, disqualified. He, he was still allowed to race, but he had his qualifying times disqualified. Um, yeah. And that was because of a, a fuel issue. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the fuel, I, I guess, I'm trying to break this down as simple as possible, like he had... The fuel ratio or the fuel being pumped into the engine was higher than it was supposed mm-hmm. to be. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I could only imagine like that would just lead to more power for the car. Yep. Like it's more fuel being burned on every mm-hmm. combustion, which should increase the amount of power um, that the car has. What I really want to kind of find out, and we don't know really how, the, like, how do they judge that? To me, that sounds so much like when an NBA player has like a really good game and all of a sudden they test them for PEDs <laughs> right after the game. <laughs> like random PED drug test. Yeah. <laughs> you ball, you had 80 points tonight. We're having a random PED. That's what it just felt like to me. Like what was the defining thing that made them say, okay, yeah, we're going to test. We're going to see like what what what's going on. Because that doesn't seem like something – like maybe you could look at the telemetry and you could look at the data yeah. that, that maybe possibly, I mean, so they're running the Renault power unit. So they're the only people running those units. So it, it, 
there's no one else on the grid that you can really compare him to other than his own teammate. Be interesting to yeah. see. I forget what's what part of motorsport it was, but I was listening to a story recently of like, oh, I think it was Chris Harris was talking about this on a podcast, uh, who's like the top gear host, about how Toyota was cheating uh, in motorsport by uh, they had a, a bypass valve on their turbo. So their turbo was supposed to be restricted. So everybody running in the race was only supposed to have 280 horsepower. And then in the straights, the Toyotas were just blowing past everybody and the drivers didn't know it, but the engineers did. And it's because they had this bypass valve. So the turbo was actually working at higher boost than the rest of the teams. So I don't know. This is speculation. I don't actually have anything to back this up, but maybe Pierre Gasly was just hauling it, hauling ass down the straights. And uh, everyone's like, hey, that looks faster than it should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe no, no, his no, trap no, no, speeds no. were higher than other people's. And he's maybe he was pushing yeah. 225 when everyone else is at like 218. And people were confused by that. <laughs> or more like they're like, oh, uh, uh, that car should not be able to do yeah. that. <laughs> that Alpine doesn't have that kind of speed, Pierre. Let's see your yeah. let's see your fuel to air mixture ratio. That's it. Yeah. That's it. But yeah, so that um, that was an interesting thing. Um, and then that set up a pretty fun uh, starting grid because then you had uh, Gasly disqualified from qualifying. So he ended up, I think, starting 18th. And then Lewis yeah. Hamilton ended up taking a new power unit. So he started from the pits. And then so did Esteban Ocon. I can't actually remember why. Um, so that bumped Lando up to 15th because of the Pierre Gasly disqualification. So you had a, an interesting situation where uh, the back half of the grid or the back quarter of the grid included Lando Norris, uh, Botas, Joe, Pierre, Lewis, and Esteban Ocon, which is a yeah. funny, funny lineup back there. Yeah, for, for, the, for the last quarter. But, I mean, that was the back half. And then in the front, you had Charles Leclerc, who had an amazing uh, qualifying, got pole. Mm-hmm. You had um, Oscar Piastri yeah. up there in second. And, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, Carlos Sainz kind of wrapped um Car- rounding out the top Carlos three. Carlos Sainz in third, Checo in fourth. Uh, who had a great yes. qualifying, and uh, George Russell, then oh, Max Checo. Verstappen. Checo, Checo, Checo. We'll talk about that later. I've got a lot to say. Oh, about. you got to feel for the guy. You really do. I'm sorry, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll get into yeah. that uh, uh, later about who's at fault in that 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 situation. Mm-hmm. But yeah, interesting beginning to the race. You have once again Leclerc in first. You got um, Oscar second. Signs. And then Checo. Uh, so the race starts, and I mean, from from the get go, you, you like, I have to say, Leclerc like got a nice jump. Yeah. Um, you know, he he really set himself nicely up for that first left hander, and there was a moment there where like he just, it seemed like Oscar was close, and then Leclerc started pulling away just a little bit. Yeah. And then. It it basically was just, I think the turning point was Oscar went in before Leclerc did. For the pits. Well, it For was interesting pits. because I think before before Oscar pitted, so we had, it was Leclerc, uh, Piastri, and then Perez in third, and uh, I think Sainz in fourth, and actually I think Albon in fifth or something like that. Yeah. Uh, before Norris pitted, uh, Leclerc had put up a, a three-second gap, so he was actually pulling away. Before Piastri, you he, mean. Uh, oh, sorry, excuse me, yeah. wrong. We wish, we wish, we wish it was wrong. Norris, number but, one continue, driver. Continue. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> before Piastri pitted, and it was I think a combination of that that undercut, and then also, uh, so he was three seconds up, and then he he was about a second or so slower on his in lap. Leclerc, because mm-hmm. he pitted right after, he he was a second or so slower on his in lap, and then almost two seconds slower on his out lap. He was yeah. just babying those tires, and that fully gave away his gap to uh, Piastri. So yeah. wasn't a great move by him. And, yeah, and then Piastri goes ahead and does something that I challenged him to do the previous week when I called them out and I said. It's nothing making a move like that on your teammate. Yeah. 
make that move on Charles Leclerc. Make that move on uh, Max Verstappen. And I guess he heard from somewhere or someone mentioned it to him because he pulled easily. Before I even say that, he has a habit of pulling moves and he's able to pull them because it seems like the people he's pulling them against just do not expect it. Mm -hmm. Do not expect it. Lando didn't expect that move at Monza. And I think... Was it Monza or, or, or yeah, Monza? Well, yeah, he pulled that move at Monza, and if you look at that move here in Baku, mm-hmm. like it almost looked like Charles Leclerc is letting him, but like, he's a teammate, and Charles Leclerc has moved to the side to let him go. Like that's like look at the top down view of that yeah. move and see how to the right Charles Leclerc goes. And and like it really does look like teammates and, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna let you I'm gonna I'm gonna give you this this to let you pass me on the worst part so of the of the course. Leclerc did say that. Like he said both he said exactly both things. One, he was surprised that uh Norris made the move when he did. And then two, mm. he was he kind of let him go because once again you said Norris. Oh my, my God. gosh, I'm a fear. <laughs> my gosh, tell me who you're really rooting for. My gosh, man. Honestly, I'm not. I'm not rooting for Norris. I just maybe I'm rooting against Max. I don't know. Um, but okay, so he Leclerc. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Leclerc said uh, that he was surprised that that Piastri made that move when he did and um, late breaked as he did. But at the same time, also thought I can catch him again. Um, and so mm-hmm. kind of let him by either way. Yeah. So yeah. it was a little bit of both from my understanding. Yeah. It, so which was it? Because and, and P actually said something interesting. He's he and it kind of lets me know the type of race car driver he is. He was like, I made that move knowing that there was a 50 yeah. 50 chance i, I <laughs> love that by the way <laughs> i did too <laughs> like you would never hear that from someone like lando i hate to say it but like he said like i made yeah. that move knowing there's a 50 chance 50 he chance went for broke. i'm either gonna yeah. i'm either gonna eat the wall yeah. <laughs> or i'm gonna make the move yeah. death and or glory death or glory <laughs> <laughs> he literally just said and if you look at the replay too, like it's literally if if you cut if you cut the film or the replay right before he's about to reach the wall, the outside right side wall, mm-hmm. by all intents for it looks like he's about to hit the wall. Yeah. It it looks like he makes a turn and he's about to hit the wall. But then if you extend the video and keep on watching it, he barely slips through. Not only does he barely slip through. But then Leclerc, who has the better line now, tries to sneak onto his left side, and he immediately oh, shuts yeah. the he door. Oh yeah, he shut that door very quickly. That that was honestly that that the way he closed out at the end to me was like the more surprising part of it. I was like, oh yes. yeah, you're not going anywhere, uh, Leclerc. Yeah, like like when when most people would have been like in the moment, like oh my gosh, yeah, I made the move, <laughs> <laughs> and and the other car just passes by. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's like here's the perfect example. It's like someone in basketball dunking the ball and like getting all excited, only for the team to check it up real quick, throw it down, and then get a yeah. layup. So it, it 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 in my mind, I thought that's what was going to happen. But he had the wherewithal to not only make the move, but immediately know, okay, Charles has the better line. He's probably going to try to sneak in on my left, even though this is a short run down to turn two. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Close that down immediately. Yeah, it was an awesome move. And it it set up I think the rest of the the rest of the race, right? Like that was from there on out, it was game on between him and Leclerc and those two guys were going at it for it felt like 20 plus laps of yeah. of Leclerc in the DRS zone chasing down uh Piastri, Oscar Piastri, not Lando Norris. I can remember that. Um, yeah. And that was pretty exciting race. Like if you just want to watch like the hunter and the hunted all race, yeah. 
uh, that was a pretty, this is a pretty good one to, to go back and watch. And it, it's, it's so high pressure. Oh yeah. Like, like to be in that position as the hunted, mm-hmm. you can't make a mistake. Right. You, you, you cannot make a mistake. You make a mistake. You, you giving up the position. There's just, you can't go too wide. You can't, you can't miss your line. You literally have to race. You're racing yourself and try to not pay attention to the to the person who's directly but you're also you. playing defense you, the entire time the entire time <laughs> actually like, that led to uh my favorite moment of the formula one season so far uh which was i forget which turn it is but uh piastri came in hot uh oh yeah <laughs> he, he came in hot hit hit the the curb and kind of full drift drifted and then Leclerc came in hot too and full drift. <laughs> and so you had this like yep. beautiful shot of both of them sliding at the same time through the turn. And just, yep. man, this is cool. Yeah. And that just happened over and over yeah. again, which brings to a point what I was mentioning earlier about Baku. And, and it was so evident this time around. Baku is nothing without that straight. The super long back straight nothing without that straight you take that straight out of because almost every lap i was not paying attention to anything else like like i it it, the drama always happened on the straight the rest of the drama was just like is he gonna make that turn is he gonna get around the castle Mm -hmm. like like is he gonna have a lapse in 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 what he's doing and but but those things were so secondary compared to is Charles going to get the DRS to be able to move, make the move yeah. down the straight. And what annoyed me so much about that that whole battle was like there's 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 an intelligence in racing that I was expecting to see in Charles, but I didn't see it at all. What was that like? I, I think I think of like if Lewis was 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 behind him in that car or if Max was like th- there's got to be some gamemanship. You can't keep trying the same thing over and over again. You can't. Like I felt like the whole time down that straight going to turn one every single time with Charles Leclerc trying to get in on the inside. Mm-hmm. Every single yeah, time. Yeah, he didn't he didn't do any it, setup moves. And I think you No setup moves. You even moves. saw this with uh gosh, I can't remember if it was Norris passing Verstappen or Russell passing Verstappen, but like yeah. they they basically faked faked the inside and then went outside or vice versa. Yes. And and you yeah, saw no Leclerc, setup moves. Claire was just really was just, just trying to pull DRS and let me get by you. And yeah, yeah. And and his car couldn't. I figure like by the fifth time doing that, you would have realized, okay. This isn't working out. Before I like kill my tires, like let me try something else. Like, like I mean, and and it, for Oscar, it must have been the easiest thing possible. Race, race, race. Defend on the inside. Still get my line. Continue. Yeah. Race. Repeat. Right. Repeat. He repeat. just knows the only the only turn he's really defending on is is uh is turn, turn one, one, and then the rest of the time he's he's staying on track and trying to preserve his tires yeah. as much as possible. Yeah. yeah, like, like that's the thing. Like, like I would have, I would have tucked in early in the DRS, and as soon as I was starting to make gains, and you could see it, I, I would dart to the outside, yeah. and and then and then I would just, I would just late break a little bit and and squeeze him and squeeze him and make him think like, okay, are you going to, do you want to make this corner or not? Yeah, <laughs> like, like what do you want to do? But there was none of that. There was none of that gamemanship. And I think a lot of it was just, I don't know if it was overconfidence in, in the car and thinking that eventually he would make the move or eventually like the tires would wear for for for, um, for Oscar. For Oscar. But I mean, you look back at like all the data, nothing says those McLaren tires are bad wear tires. Yeah. So, like, I would just go on the idea of I have to make this move. The same way Oscar had the idea, I have to make this move now and lock this yep. in. Like, Leclerc should have been like, I have to make this move. Right. 
And I just didn't see no. it. Like it seemed like he was still shook daddy off the off the first move. Well, I, I like, think I'm, part like, of it was I'm, also it was Oscar and Leclerc just really right. Leclerc could have made a move, but then they were both Leclerc was really hoping Oscar would make a mistake and that he would could put enough pressure on him that he would make a mistake and then he could take advantage of it. And yeah. he didn't. He uh, there was no like opportunistic or defensive move that was uh well like too tried too hard and it and, and it ended up in oscar's favor because they both were mm-hmm. level-headed in their racing and they both were uh pretty concise with their movements uh yeah. and i think that's that's that that pressure didn't get to oscar as it yeah. might have for maybe uh checo perez and carlos signs you want to talk about that Dude. Dude. So just as a Dude. setup. Side yeah. note, side note, before we talk about it real quick, uh, Alonzo would have made that move. I'm just gonna say that. But but I digress. <laughs> yeah. Alonzo would have made know, that we move. We know Alonzo would have made that move. Alonzo would have made that if it, if he was Charles Le- in Leclerc's mm-hmm. car, he would have made that move. But we continue yeah. to the most and, and ridiculous Oscar might, last Oscar lap. might have been in a wall at that point too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But that's yeah. That's Alonzo. Uh yes, that's Alonzo. But yeah, so we had because we had basically 20 something laps of of uh Leclerc chasing down Piastri uh in DRS uh it started to bunch up at the front and you had two guys kind of licking their chops uh i'd say most people were probably focused on Checo who was in third who was mm-hmm. waiting for one of those two to make a mistake and yeah. be opportunistic yeah. too but what Checo didn't realize is he had a fourth guy also waiting in the wings which was Carlos Sainz waiting for his opportunity so you yep. had four wide, three wide at some points um, at the top four. And, and the, the other aspect to that was this happened as Le- Leclerc's tires basically fell yes. off. He, so Leclerc started pushing both of those cars back. Mm-hmm. And, and, and here we have Oscar yeah. just riding yeah, off into the sus- took sunset. Off. He, he had quite the gap. Took off. And then all of a sudden now everyone's bunched up in DRS mm-hmm. chasing each other. Um, one side note on on uh, Leclerc's tires. I had a feeling he was going to drop off off a cliff like out of nowhere because he had a radio comment um, after his, his after his pit where he's like where mm-hmm. signs was kind of up his behind and, and uh, so was um, Piastri and he was or he was kind of in the sandwich between the two and he basically was like. Is there something wrong with our tires or are these guys just pushing harder than me or do they just have more grip and it was cl- i was like yeah <laughs> like oh okay so his he's clearly not getting the he's he's he was pushing this that's mm-hmm. what that told me was i'm pushing really hard right now what's happening how are these guys going this fast and so yeah. he was yeah. he was not managing his tires as much as he wanted to and that's why they fell off mm-hmm. a cliff but so they fell off a cliff at what like lap 49 48 okay 48 48 49 yeah and then we had on lap 50 uh yep. we had the move by Perez where he tried to overtake Leclerc right mm-hmm. and then he missed it Leclerc went inside yes. out on him and then Carlos Sainz went in for the yes in, he went went along for the ride <laughs> and then so so then we have Sainz basically <laughs> now now in front of Checo who was Checo literally went from second to third to fourth, yeah. in like and you got to five six. You got to think about this for Checo. He's had such a bad stretch of races, and regardless of his result in Monza, like no one's been giving him any credit, and he finally is having like a good weekend all around where he looked good in practice, he looked good in qualifying, and for fifty out of fifty one laps, he looks like he's ready for a podium and actually could potentially sneak into second place. Um, mm-hmm. So he's hungry, and he might be a little bit eager, and <laughs> a little, a little bit. bit eager. So he makes that mistake with with uh, with with Charles Leclerc. Let's signs go by, and then signs also is eager. Looks at potentially going on the outside of his teammate, like oh hey maybe I can get second here, um, and then mm-hmm. he doesn't get it and ends up on the outside coming in. Both of them are trying to get into Leclerc's slipstream. And they mm-hmm. make contact. And it results in two of the funniest radio messages I've heard in a while. 
Jekyll's <laughs> losing his mind, calling <laughs> calling signs an a hole, saying, "What is this guy doing? What is this guy doing?" And then the signs message is signs. What happened? Signs just sounds so guilty. Like what happened? What, what happened? He, he goes, what happened? I don't know. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> it was. It was, the, it was the most. I definitely know what happened. <laughs> But what happened? <laughs> yes. No, uh, I will incredible. say this, and this is where I'm going to state who I think is at fault. Okay. You ever hear when someone knows they're wrong, they tend to be the loudest person in the room? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what that that told me. Like, hearing Checo, Checo, I, I put most of the blame on Checo. Oh, okay. We are in agreement. Yeah. Yes, most of the blame is on. Yeah, most of the blame is on. For Checo. those listening, we we, we saved this as a to... surprise for the podcast. I I wanted to yeah. know because this has been very divisive. On the this is more divisive than Studio Underdog making a collaboration watch for Moser. <laughs> yes, 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 much more. People, much people more. seem to... close. Yeah. Still close. Actually, I take people it back. Are... Very close. And there's there's our watch integration into the podcast. Um, there we go. People are divided families amongst uh was this Checo's fault or Sainz's fault and no this 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 was definitely more Checo's yeah, I, fault yeah i certainly side with Sainz like because here's the thing Checo had a two lane highway of room <laughs> to move into he had exactly a ton of space exactly it, you know what this was? it's like it's like being on a highway and someone is switching lanes and yeah. instead of making a a, a, a move to avoid mm-hmm. it, you just yell at them like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh. What is that guy?" Ah! I was, and then they hit you. I was watching this on a train. I was literally watching this on the New Jersey Transit on my mm-hmm. phone, and they had the cockpit view. I think it was either an overhead shot or a cockpit view, but either way, I could tell that Checo was not turning, and you could see that Signs was pulling forward into the racing line to get behind Leclerc. And so it was funny because after the race, Checo was like, it all happened so fast. I don't really know what happened. I saw it live and I said, what are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> like on the train, yeah. watching on my phone, I yelled out loud, what are you doing? <laughs> yep. Because I saw yeah. he's, you didn't move at all. At all. At all. Like, this like is, dude. Yeah, like, I don't have supervision of a professional athlete. I'm watching in real time <laughs> and I could see, dude, just move over an inch. Just inch. an inch, <laughs> like, like, or or come off the throttle a yeah. little bit. So like, many like, options here, like, dude. Like, I, I understand as a driver, like, especially when people change lanes, you so want to just be like, "Oh, they didn't see me. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, it's their fault." But to think of it this way: in in take those two people, one person not see the other, one person see both of yeah. them. You, as the person who sees what's going down, needs to make the executive decision to pull back mm-hmm. or, or or move over. Like, you can't just, like, be like, uh, 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 yeah. and, and crash him. Like, you, this so reminded me of, of Monaco. This so reminded yes. me of Monaco. Yeah. It's but the same it's, thing. It's, he, it's just, the same thing. Just like, move you, over a little bit. Just move around. That, was that you Nico Hulkenberg or it was one of the Haas guys, right? It was both of the Haas. Yeah, both of the and Monaco, Haas guys. Yeah. Monaco, Monaco was a little different because he was he was sandwiched. Mm-hmm. He, so so there were there was I think Nico was on the 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 right side and and then um Magnuson. Um Magnuson was on the left. It, it was either either or either yeah. or I'm trying to remember. It was three wide because both of them got caught. But regardless, there's some self preservation that needs to occur yes. here. And I, I can yeah. understand people's argument that Leclerc, not Leclerc, uh, signs did move over into yeah. uh, into Checo's path and that Checo does have the right to, for lack of a better phrase, stand his ground and keep his way. But yeah. my goodness, but his his path is not two thirds yeah. of the freaking track. Yeah. He had space. That's, that's the thing. He had space. You can't. Come on, he had a ton there of space. There needs to be, you need to have some self-preservation instinct here. And yes. yes. I don't know if he was, yes. uh, you know, just so focused on the idea of like, I was so close to getting second place here and mm-hmm. now I'm in, I was so close to a podium and now I'm on fourth. Yeah. I need to prove myself. This is my chance to 
Like yep. Max is clearly behind me. I'm actually going to yep. be the better Red Bull all weekend. Yeah. And then and, he did a Checo and, thing. And here's the crazy thing. Had he gotten for, fourth place, I would not have been mad at mm. him. He outperformed was on, Max Verstappen. I, That's the yeah. one thing we've been complaining about all season is yeah. that he can't even match. Yeah. He, can, he can't even come close to matching Max. And here he was outperforming. Yeah. And, and, and listen, you know what? Carlos was, it's not like, Carlos was on, had a, I think, a better tire than he did at that point in time. So Carlos was just on a charge. Mm -hmm. I do not hold that against Checo, him losing that place. Like, and there was still like another lap to go. Yeah. So so it's just like, okay, cool. What do you want? Mm -hmm. Do you want to force this issue or do you want to finish this race? You know what, you know what was one of the funnier parts about it? Uh, oh, by the way, everyone is fine. We're glad everyone was fine. But the one of the funnier yeah. parts about it was on lap 49, Lando Norris got by Max Verstappen. So at the beginning of lap 50, they pitted Max <laughs> yeah. to get new tires get so we could go lap. for a fast lap and get a point yeah. back on, on Lando. <laughs> Because they're thinking of and the driver's Checo championship. Still them over. And so and not che- only did Checo crash out and DNF, and so no points for him, but he also lost that fast lap opportunity <laughs> for Max. But then I think also, did he lose a position on top of that? I don't know. Either um, way, it, he yeah. screwed up both race strategies. Totally. So yeah. that was fun. Yeah. yeah. That was really like, good. Listen, like, yeah. dude, come on. Like you 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 would have came out this weekend. No one would have fault you for finishing fourth. No, nope, people would have celebrated the, the, the you. The three cars, at this point in time, I think people feel like those three cars that would have been ahead of you are just had a better car this race. Mm-hmm. You would have finished the race. Yeah. Ahead of your teammate. Yeah. Like, 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 dude, come on. Pick pick your pick your battles. And, like, all his fault. I'm sorry. His fault. And that, his fault. His fault. His fault. His fault. His that fault. goes back to just Oscar Piastri. Uh, his calm under pressure and his ability to make decisive movements um, with clarity is going mm-hmm. to, I, it, I don't know how many times I messed up this year, how, how many years he's been in the league um, on the grid as a second year driver to have the ability he does and to make the decisions he does. I think it pretty, it bodes mm-hmm. pretty well for his future. And I think that might be the real reason why <laughs> McLaren's unwilling to declare one driver a priority over the other, other yeah. other than um, the Cause, soft cause, way they did it before this race. Yeah, listen, like, like Lando has all the experience, but even I have to admit it. Didn't, I I I can no longer call call him that boy. I'm sorry, he's he's I'm, he's he's no longer has that term to his name. He is he is a man. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to he's that. No because... longer. <laughs> he, he's no longer that boy. Yeah. He is a man because okay. he's clearly shown that he has he has that it factor. Yeah, like, and it it it's something that like I don't know where his career is going to go. Um, I think it's going to be very successful, but it's something that just like a handful of drivers on the grid have. Yeah, it, it, it and I feel he's- like to be great. Having it doesn't ensure that you're going to be great, but almost everyone who's great has mm-hmm. it. And if you look at these, and, and, this race in the con, or if you look at the season in context between this race and Monza together, and honestly, his performance over the last couple races, I think he's had some of the highest point totals. Just the moves he makes, the moves he made on his own teammate in Monza, it wasn't appropriate, mm-hmm. but it's that's his gut instinct is to make that move. Move, and yeah. he did it again here. So that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Like I'm beginning to think moves like that are not like plotted when it comes to him. Maybe not. Yeah. They're they're, they're just they're like opportunities that he has to yep. take. It's it's like in his mind that oh, there's a door there. I have to open it. Like he's not like he's not coming in thinking oh, I'm about to screw my room my my teammate. He's thinking like oh, opportunity. Yeah. It knocks only once. I'm going to take it. <laughs> like, I don't care who it is that I'm affecting. It's an opportunity. I have to take yeah. it. Like, his mind doesn't compute the other things into that formula. 
like, oh, but it's your teammate. He's in the championship battle. You got to think about yeah. that. His mind just sees opportunity. Yeah. It's I gotta take it's it. exciting. Like, and it's it's exciting to to have a driver like that. Okay. Like, don't get me wrong. There are going to be times where like he's going to go for the door and it's going to be shut in his face. Mm-hmm. But like that shouldn't take away from that that willingness to 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 take that risk. And I think McLaren so, still has to think about uh, the drivers' championship as much as the you know what what they have with with Oscar Piastri. Uh, but speaking of opportunities, do we want to talk about? Uh, we kind of talked about it at qualifying the Williams team and their opportunities in this race. I think they yeah. I think they did pretty well. We and so we ended up here's the grid or this is the 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 race result. We had Oscar in first, Leclerc, George Russell, the beneficiary of everything here. Uh, <laughs> My man slipped on a banana peel and got a podium. That's what he did. Doyle rules. Um, sorry, oh. I can't say banana peel, and I, I have to say that out loud. Uh, <laughs> so we were talking about eager beavers and like someone who is always opportunistic and ends up in walls and. Uh, that's often George Russell. And I think he had a pretty fun controlled race, this, this race in Baku. And he benefited by having a clean, smart race. He watched two guys crash out and he ended up in third, which was great. So he's in third Lando climbs all the way back from 15th ends up in fourth, passing Max Verstappen on lap 49. So he side note sign sounding like ever the greatest teammate. Oh yeah, in the post, like like the best of teammates, like he's the supporting driver. He but, made um, that okay. Continue. So before I get to Williams, this was another fun point. There was uh, an incredible situation here where uh, there was a I think a tactical mistake on McLaren's part where they didn't mm-hmm. cover Checo with uh, Oscar's pit stop, and so they had to. There was a point where. Checo was potentially battling Oscar for first and and uh, mm-hmm. Oscar needed to pit and potentially could have came out behind Checo. Mm-hmm. But at the moment, because of the staggered pits, you had Lando in front of Checo. And staggered pits and, and Lando trying to run long on his hard, yes, his hard tires. Yes. He, he went like 38 laps on those hard tires, right? Something crazy yeah. like that. Uh and they call on the radio, Lando, if you can hold back Checo without compromising your position or your race, can you please do it? And he's just like, yep, got it. And Checo immediately knows what he's doing. He's like, he's holding me back, uh, which, I mean, Checo's done a great job of that in the past. So mm-hmm. he knew exactly mm-hmm. what was happening. But that that was teamwork making the dream work because he held yep. off Checo yep. like literally by the second, just enough time yep. for Oscar to come out in front of him on that on that pit stop maintain his lead and ultimately win the race. So amazing work there by Lando Norris. Yeah. He is a team, but going, teammate. going back to the, going back to the Williams, yeah. you know, they, they, they definitely benefited as well from the two man going yeah. out. I think they went from nine, 10 to seven, eight, yeah. to seven, eight. Mm-hmm. Um, Cal, Calapinto getting points on his second drive. Yeah. Like, like immediately paying off for the team. Immediately, he's paying off for the I'm, team. It, it, I, I, I can't wait to see him in, in a couple more races. He already, so um, apparently, he already has more points than uh, Logan Sargent had in his entire oh, career. Yeah. So there we there go. You go. <laughs> that but, says it all. You know, r- race is finished. Yeah. Um, with the results, we now have McLaren leading the constructors. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Lando only, I think, what is it, 59 or 58 points behind? It could it probably, it started at 62, and I think now he's 59 points behind Max yeah, Verstappen. Max has 313, Lando's got 254. So, yep. Let me do my, so 59 do points. my mental math there. Yeah, 59 points. 59 points. Um, no, I think McLaren, for, if not, when taking into account the fudge up Norris had in qualifying, like I don't think McLaren could have asked for a better ending to this no, race. No, not at all. You actually still got three points to dig into the the drivers' championship, the lead, and 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 leapfrog. And it, it looks like the Red Bull still doesn't know what's going no, on. No, it it 
as much as I keep trying to preach confidence in Red Bull and that they're still going to finish the season out strong, it, every race, uh, my my position becomes more tenuous. Yep, yep. I mean, if you're seeing Checo Perez consistently out out being Max Verstappen, that's a problem. <laughs> Not that's good. a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's a but problem. This this was a disaster um, of a weekend for Red Bull, right? Because you not oh, yeah. only did you uh, have your potential podium driver crash out, uh, it was just a mess for for Max, and then you just gave up a lot of points and got leapfrogged by McLaren in the standings, and now Ferrari is sniffing on your yeah. heels. Yeah. So if if Signs had finished that race, like they did, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. hit job by. I don't Jack know what's going on. Taking out Signs, yeah, because yeah. that that you see, he was trying to help the team. <laughs> trying to help go. the team. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to um, be interesting to to keep an eye on the constructors championship. I think drivers championship wise, as much as we still got some gains from Lando, this wasn't the gains they probably. They they yeah. need every weekend to be good, and this wasn't a great weekend overall for them. Yeah, like I think this next race, they need either a, a, a like for me to start for me to to really like think about this being as like okay, this is a push. Like this next race, I think they need to get under. What is it like? It's it's fifty nine now. I think they need to get under fifty. Mm-hmm. At the very least, in, ter- in terms of the difference, they need to be in the high forties okay. by the time they're done with this race. I mean, if you if, with um, if he, with Singapore, yeah, if, if he wins and Max kind of he being Lando wins and Max kind of stays in that seventh, sixth, yeah. eighth realm, right. even fifth or yeah. sixth realm, mm-hmm. like that's that he'd be in that that wheelhouse right there. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's what they need. That that's honestly what they need for me to take this seriously. If it's another three pointer or four pointer, I don't think they're making it back. I I really don't. And mind you, I think Max still has to take parts though. So that still opens like he probably still has to change out the engine. He still has all the things, all those things right. to do. So I need them to do this while he's still racing, so that when he takes the parts, it's an even bigger like yeah like chomp. From from the lead, but um, be important. you know that was the race. But you know we wanted to take a chance to kind of switch things up a little bit and kind of delve into some of the things like we just saw in the race and some of the technical aspects of the mm-hmm. race. Um, so we have a little thing called how the tech was won, um, and we I mean we've talked a little bit about these things already. Um, we talked about Oscar's move, which. I mean, clearly, I mean, if we dig into it a little bit more, it does seem like the McLarens, one, have just, overall, they have better pace. But it also shows just how much better they are in terms of um, bringing in the tires, um, their ability to to last longer on the tires. Mm-hmm. Um, all those things, I think, played a part in that move. Um, that move was definitely a move of confidence. Like I know Oscar says that it was a 50, 50 chance he hits the wall, but to he, I don't think he would even be thinking about that move if he was in another car. Yeah. I, I think he, he's thinking like that move. I, there's a chance that I can make that move in this car. Yep. Like on these tires. Well, also, and, and it just stuck. It, tires were an interesting part of this whole weekend. Uh, so we talked about Oscar's move. We talked about, Leclerc kind of in that conversation of tires being clearly pushing and not understanding where other people were on their tires. I think everybody had mixed results on the tires this weekend. There was Mm -hmm. something where the mediums weren't getting up to temperature. And I think a lot more people were a lot more comfortable on the hards. Uh, So that was interesting to see. And it it seemed like the cars varied too, because I don't think actually Mm -hmm. Max Verstappen was happy on the hards. I think he was bouncing around Mm -hmm. a lot more. Uh, you had Lewis Hamilton talking to his pit crew during qualifying, saying, "Like these ter- tires, you terrible. need temp in these tires. We need temp in these tires." And they couldn't figure it out. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you had Russell basically saying the same thing after the mm-hmm. race, basically saying, "Like, like you put one set of tires on the car, and it's just like ooh la la." 
And then you you put another set and it's just like the change is just drastic yeah. um, in terms of like the operating window for those for those cars. Yeah, tires were definitely a big thing here. Um, and yeah, you, you could see, I think it's not just tires, but it is, it is also position. Um, I mean, I think we've seen a couple of races already where with clean air, yep. it seems like, like some of these cars and tire wear is, is much better. Um, like it, consistently you see with the McLarens when they're in clean air, either leaving a race or having a little gap between them and the person ahead it, it seems like the car just operates like a little bit better. Um, but yeah, just overall tires were a big thing. This race, um, it allowed individuals to be a little bit more, more trustworthy on the brakes, um, which I found interesting because in, in FP1, FP2 and FP3, like it seemed like everybody was just getting to know the tires. Mm-hmm. And it, it didn't and, seem and like, like you even s- anyone, a lot of teams didn't get really as much data on, the maybe the hard tire which proved i think yeah. to be the better tire for the weekend as they as they might yeah. have wanted to which was which yeah. was interesting yeah so so that was that was you know oscar's move charles charles and in, in the tires um another another interesting tidbit like and it's 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 come up since um the end of the race is this this I wouldn't say issue, but this thing going on with McLaren's rear ring. Um, if you if you guys are listening, just do a little research. Just do a quick search. Um, so if you're listening, chances are you know what DRS is and your drag reduction system. And it's basically a system in the car which allows the flap on the rear wing to open, um, decreases the amount of drag, and you you get this 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 instantaneous boost in in speed. Yeah. So it's and basically it's, it's bas- the downforce that you would get through a turn is reduced, which then allows for a better strips slipstream angle on the straight and then faster top end speed. Yep. So, and then they, it's a lot of times you'll see, not a lot of times, you'll see drivers who are within one second coming down a straight or a DRS zone and you just see towards the end of that zone them just making meters on these cars. Um, and I know I know people will probably look at the wing and be like, oh, how does that make a difference? But you see it in the race. It's like two cars. One is almost standing still and the other one is just speeding by yeah. it. Um, and all of that is because of this gap that 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 happens that the driver activates when they're within one second in a DRS zone to allow the downforce um, for allow for there not to be as much downforce and the car to just be able to, to zoom. What people have been pointing out is that it seems on the ends of McLaren's car when they're not in DRS. So basically they don't have this thing mm-hmm. open. There's a slight bend, which seems to allow some air through mm which then is like a always on DRS, a mini DRS. Some people are calling it. Um, this is interesting. So, and this is on the very outskirts of the wing. I'm making wing <laughs> with my hands, but literally like in this instance, the, 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 when McLaren is not in DRS, so they're not chasing someone, they're being chased. The flap should be closed. Yep. So full downforce, they're not getting the benefit of of DRS. However, it seems like as they're coming down a straight, there is the air that is hitting this flap is causing the top side to move back while also pushing the bottom end up. And this is on the ends. And there's this small gap that is being created on each side of the flap of the wing which is allowing air to pass mm. through. It's not a huge slit. It just probably, from the videos, it looks like maybe it's three, four, five millimeters, yeah. um, maybe half a centimeter or so. But if you look at how drastic DRS looks when it's fully open, yeah. it should let you know that even if it's a little open, you're still getting some gains. Interesting. Like that's enough drag. Redu- that's enough 
reduction in drag to make a slight difference, which a lot of people are pointing to because if you look at the the Charles Leclerc's inability to pass to pass um Piastri. Yeah, I mean the Piastri. McLarens are clearly faster <coughs> faster down the the straights. So yep. you're you're saying this is what I, I I haven't seen these videos. I do want to watch them now. Mm. Um you're saying that McLaren basically has a something that hasn't been ruled illegal. Mm-hmm. but is giving them an advantage in the straights, which yeah. in turn then should hurt them in the corners a little yeah. bit. Yeah, which, 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 yeah, which, which, but the interesting thing is... Which you probably saw is, actually in, seems, this, in this race because Leclerc was pulling up. It up. seems like this, this only happens on high speed. So basically the flap is closed mm. and the flap returns to like a closed mm-hmm. mode once they get under, once they start braking, but as soon as they get back to high speed, the air hitting the top of the flap is on the it's sides pulling only. It open. Not, it's like pulling it, it's like bending it back yeah. and opening the bottom portion of it slightly. Okay. So it, it's interesting. It's not active but, arrow. It is uh, like basically wind driven arrow like if once you get yes, above yes. say 170 miles per hour uh that amount of pressure is actually forcing some of the flap open and then actually creates yeah. uh, even less drag which would make sense and would make which make completely sense because in order to pass test as a wing a certain amount of of weight is pushed on the wing to ensure that it remains closed. Mm, okay. So if they've discovered that you can you can pass the test at whatever that weight is, but at certain speeds, the amount of pressure surpasses that weight on the wing, and you could uh, you could create a flap that only reacts at that certain speed, but doesn't react to like the pressure of it being pushed mm-hmm. down during like testing to make sure that this this flat works it would be highly intelligent and it would be just another showing of the gamesmanship in f1 yeah. and I, I i would i would clap my hands to it like like this is literally i think why it's i don't ever see that as cheating i always just see it as people finding a new way to pass the test mm-hmm. because like you could say for two years Red Bull has been cheating, <laughs> but no, Red Bull just found a great way to pass the test, and 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 you could also say maybe you know there this great way has been shut down, and that's why they haven't been doing good. But still, for two something years, it was good. So, like they obviously accomplish anything. The key thing for me though is in this race, it's hard for me to point to that and be like, okay, that's why Leclerc didn't pass Oscar because I watched that race with my own eyes. Yeah. And I saw Leclerc's inability to, to test and make and try to make them. Yeah. He was pulling within Um, striking distance regardless. I mean, and also this is the longest, longest back straight in formula one. So this would be the the place where they're going to get the most benefit out of that potential modification mm-hmm. or whatever arrow. Um, it's that's an interesting concept, but at the same time, mm-hmm. there's probably some reduction in downforce then on the turns and you should be as Leclerc able to make up that difference in the, in the rest of the track when it gets tight and twisty, like around the castle and things like yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 interesting thing, but like I said, I, I think this was more Leclerc's inability to to really get by Oscar. Yeah. I mean Oscar Oscar was playing good defense, always covering the inside line. But at the same time I think with Leclerc's experience like he should have found a way to 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 psych him, you know, kind of you know, pull him in one way, go the other. You, 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 
racing is not just I'm going to overwhelm you with speed. Mm-hmm. Like you have to you have to find ways to play with your your with your competitor's mind. Yeah. And I just never saw him really do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he thought maybe he thought pressure, like you said earlier, was the only thing he needed, but clearly like Oscar is showing pressure doesn't really phase right. him. I mean, like he he seems like he's the second coming of Kimmy, like in in ice the Ice, ice Man, Man cometh. Yeah. Like he just he just has that right and the pressure kind of right. vibe. The pressure thing is funny so, in the context of Leclerc because I I think like in earlier episodes of this podcast we talked about the idea that Leclerc is really fast in qualifying, and he's he's fast when it comes to just setting a fast lap time. But there's something about the actual race pace when you are competing not against the clock but also against your actual fellow drivers where yeah. the pressure maybe hits him a little bit more than than an ice man like piastri yeah yeah and i think that that just may be the case i think but that's why like i pointed and i said like someone like alonzo <laughs> or someone like lewis yep. or max like, like the really or Max huh? Verstappen. Um, oh yeah, the really experienced driver would know, like okay, like side note, if that was Max, Max would have never let him make that move in the first <laughs> place. <laughs> like let's just say that, like Max would have closed the door, been extra defensive. Yeah, elbows out. Max, Max is so used to Max doing Max things that Max would expect Max things from other people. Right. <laughs> so, so which is crazy like, yeah. to see how easily he let. He he let like someone like George Lando. Russell or Lando Norris buy. Yeah, which which clearly tells me that car is is doo yeah. butter. <laughs> it, it clearly clearly that's as clear. I I it's this was the first race where I barely heard anything no. from Max Verstappen. He's he kind of has that like twenty twenty three Lewis Hamilton vibe going on right now, which is so oh surprising. My, yes, yes, it, like. To see this happen within the same yeah. year, like it, I, I like, I don't remember any of his radios. I don't remember anything. I don't even remember the complaining radios that we normally right. would get, which lets me know he's so just like, uh. Yeah. Well, wow. I'm still holding out hope. I do think Red Bull still has the opportunity to finish strong, and I, I'm not holding out hope. I'm just sticking to my position that I still think they're going to yeah. win out on the, at least the driver championship, but. But I tell you one thing, I don't think next week's going to help him. So, okay, next I, week I, is Singapore. Singapore yeah. is another street circuit, super tight street circuit. I think probably one of the hardest tracks in Formula One. Um, why don't you think next week is going to help Mr. Verstappen and the doo-doo buttholes or whatever you just said? <laughs> <laughs> the doo-doo buttholes. <laughs> <doo-doo butt. laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Did that. You just put two, 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 two together. Um, high curbs. Yeah. Oh, high curbs. That's one okay. one thing. High, high curbs, curbs and chattery um, suspension. Uh, he was yeah. lifting wheels in in uh, in Baku, which isn't great. Yeah. So I think you put those two things together. This is not going to be a good week for for him. Not, not going to be good. Okay. This. If I'm McLaren, if I'm Lando Norris, I'm looking at this week as this is my opportunity to take a big bite out of this league. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't, I don't think he's going to qualify. Well, I don't think he's going to finish the race. Well, like, I just think like they have to walk in just being like, okay, like this is our chance. Like we need to, if we, if we're looking at this seriously as like, we have an opportunity for the driver's championship. I think this is the race. I also want to see like, Lando has been getting picked on like nobody's business these past few weeks. And like, I've been waiting to see him just like, like, like just, just be like, F it. I don't care. I'm going to go out there and do my mm-hmm. thing. And I just haven't seen it. I want to see it. We saw it in Zandvoort, right? Like he absolutely destroyed everyone in Zandvoort. Yeah. But in the last, since like Monza and, and, and Baku, he's definitely, it feels like some regression. And maybe the the pressure is getting to him a little bit, but yeah, uh, yeah. You 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 want to see yeah. Lando pull his Zandvoort again and, and come in and take take over? Yeah, but I don't I I don't want him to I don't want it to be a blowout. Oh, you, you I want, want it to, to be a hard fought, yes. like 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 under pressure, mm-hmm. 
you know, make a diamond type of win. Yeah. And I'm 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 hoping that's what I see because I think he the needs Jordan that. hand on hip on Byron Russell for the win against the Utah Jazz. You want that? There was no hand on hip. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, it was a, it was completely he, fair play. There he, was no foul there. Listen, listen, Jordan, Jordan, <laughs> Jordan went left. He went right. It is what it is. What it's it just, is. It is just what it like is. Checo and, and Carlos signs. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, this was a wild card race. Damn, this was a wild card race last year. Uh, this was the only race that Verstappen didn't win to close out the season. Signs yep. won. Lando second. Mm. Uh, I think Lewis third after Russell crashed out on the last lap. So. Yeah. Yeah, this that's is what, a, this yeah. That's why good opportunity for yeah. for Lando Norris to to make some moves is is in Singapore. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, ladies and gents, that's it for this episode. Um, that was the the Baku GP, and you know we can't wait to get back to you next week with uh, the Singapore GP. But if you have any questions, suggestions, comments. You could reach me at Ready Set Watch. You could reach Amavir at Meta World Cool on Instagram. And we look forward to hearing from you guys. But that's it for this week. We'll catch you next time for the next episode of Time on Track. <laughs>